Tom had one bad habit, and that was he kept money in his shirt pocket. Limley Jackson bought the home across from the Fulgerman store in 1978. About 24 years later, he and his wife pulled out of their driveway. I didn't pay any attention to the store. And headed to church. There was always cars in and out, in and out, and it wouldn't be anything that would really get my attention if there was a car there. We had only been at church about, I guess, 15 to 20 minutes, and the preacher came in and announced to us that Tom Fogelman had been killed. Their daughter was still at the house, so they immediately got up and headed back. And of course, there was a lot of police cars and things over there. And found this scene when they pulled back in. It's pretty frightening when you think about it. And happening right on your doorstep, you might say. Their family was one of the few that didn't frequent the store because Limley worked in a grocery store and didn't need to shop across the street, but he did know Tom. I have been over there, talked to Tom a few times, but uh, we didn't buy groceries. I didn't drink beer or anything like that, so I had no reason to go over there other than just to go talk to Tom. And he heard a lot of the same things everyone else in the neighborhood did about what happened the night he was killed. And apparently he died instantly because they crushed his skull up, I understand. When the scene cleared, the true details of what happened remained blurry. Uh, it's a horrible crime. It's not your average um, uh, robbery and, and murder. This, this person uh, died a violent death. And having a killer on the loose was and is something they can't see through. But I've always wished we could solve it. You know, it would be a, I really would like to see somebody brought to justice for that. This was sold to some people named Jackson. That responsibility. When you start from the very beginning, anybody and everybody is always possible. Now falls on the shoulders of Alamance County Sheriff's Detective Barbara Tommy. Currently, the persons of interest pool is the same individuals and additional individuals. Having known nothing of the case before it was assigned to her, she's having to work her way through years of evidence, some that's been stored in the office's evidence locker since January 2002. There's an entire shelf on a cabinet that's specifically devoted to this case, and it's full from end to end. This is what was there when we grew up. And we were there as she sat down with Tom's sister, Joanne, brother-in-law, Fred, and niece, Jennifer, for the first time. But after they got through, you know, makes you sick to even think about it. Detective Tommy has to really get to know Tom, who he was, what he did, and get a better picture of what the property looked like. Where was the most junk that was on the property? Was it outside or was it inside the buildings? Oh, I'd say inside. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. She also needs to know who normally hung out at the store. It was a... Uh, oh, they burnt their own pile trash. right behind the store where they burned all kind of stuff on it and it left kind of a black pile in the yard. Why? Okay. Um, I'll discuss it with you later. But even as Tommy reads through old press releases, which contributed to Fox 8's earlier coverage... Investigators believe his killer did it for the cash in his shirt pocket and several cartons of cigarettes. Everybody knows you. Quiet. Didn't bother nobody. Yes, this good father. She has doubt robbery was the motive, or that there was a motive at all. But I really think that this case is just going to be the totality of all of the evidence and not just one particular thing. That the hammer investigators found is the murder weapon. I haven't formed an opinion on the weapon. Um, I don't have any physical evidence right now that's pointing me towards a specific direction. But times have changed. They've got ways now that they didn't have, you know, back. So maybe, you know, maybe it'll be something different. And so has technology. I think DNA is a possible one, especially because the databases have become so vast and the majority of them are interconnected in one way or another. Joanne Fogelman. She might be the one that solved it. Could have Tommy to thank. I hope she will. For solving the case of who killed the brother she called, Tommy. Really, the fresh set of eyes connects all the dots that were there, and other people laid the foundation for those dots to be connected.